Suddenly. The Lou got smashed, man! What? Okay, so what are we actually doing here? Well, we windsurf and we fish. At the same time, you see, we got a board, a sail and a rod attached at the rear. Think like trolling on a boat, just that our boat is a board. Instead of a motor, we have a sail. We can even bring cookies and beer to the play. <laughs> After losing a rod to a fish, we even prepare like pros now. Pro tip number one, massage some blood onto your lures. That's for sure better than excessive sunscreen from your hand. Wow! Then we sail out from the beach until we think it's deep enough so the lure won't digging rocks at the bottom. That can be quite costly. Before the fun even begins. <sighs> Throwing out the lure with a camera attached to it is already a challenge. But think like in 6 before it's even worse. So make sure to throw against the wind so the lines won't be tangled up in your sail when you pick it up later. Put the rod back into the support and yeah. Before you go, make sure to open the drag, otherwise any fish that takes the lure for a run will own you. Starting the engine. And then start to draw. That is what they told me. Little did I know that the reef was 5 miles offshore. So it's a super scary feeling to be here all on your own. There's where the magic happens. The drag started to scream and the fight was on. Yeah, so it began. The reel started to scream and the fight was on. I was super excited, I can tell you that much. You know, in the beginning you never know what kind of fish it is. So you're like really in the dark. Yeah, and why I'm super happy that it is a fish, I can tell you. I hooked a turtle, um, yeah, one week before that. And I was, uh, yeah, super sad that it was a turtle because I had really had some drag on it. I tangled in, in the line and, you know, it was a tough fight. Um, luckily, nothing bad happened to the turtle and we could release her again. But I was super sad because I, said I hooked a really, a really, really, really big fish and it was a turtle. But at this point, I'm, you know, you see, I'm looking around. I'm, I'm kind of a bit scared, to be honest, because I never know if that fish would be able to drag me over the reef. We still have the current, we still have the wind. It's six before. That day was a strong six before. And there's this outside reef, you know, which uh, you saw earlier in the video. And um, my fear is always that the fish would drag me over to the other side. And the other side also means that the ocean is breaking onto the reef. And that's a place you really don't want to be with your windsurf board, of course, because, you know, it's fragile and you don't want to be caught in the waves. Um, I'm a decent good windsurfer and I know my way around waves, but not on this setup and especially not with um, fishing equipment on the board. So you really need to t uh, try to avoid uh, breaking waves. I'm enjoying the fight, but still, it, you know, a lot of questions running through the head. And of course, and one of them, except being dragged over the reef, is what kind of fish is this? You know, I catch the GT before. I didn't film it. That's one of the questions. Are the cameras working? Did I switch them on? That's because you see the second GT I caught because on the first one um, I wasn't even filming. So, and they behaved differently. So I didn't know what it was. Yeah, he started to make his rounds. You need to bear in mind, I have fins under my board that would cut lines. Yeah, and he had my glance at the fish. It is a GT. I was super happy. And yeah, apparently I also realized that this GT would be bigger than the first one I caught. 
Yeah, that had around like 5 kilos. In the end, this GT you see right now has uh, 7.5 kilos, around 15 pounds. By the time it took weight, uh, it lost some blood and it lost some other fluids, I guess, since yeah, the remote beach we are on is far away from any place that has a fisherman with a balance, so we could check in and I don't have a balance myself. You see he starts doing his rounds now, the waves are kind of uh, making it tough a bit. I already got my gaff, um, just waiting for the right moment to, to hook him. I usually take my time, I saw that the hook was set pretty well in the corner, so there was no need uh, for any rush and I'm, I'm pretty nervous because I really don't want to mess this up so I take my time and don't really want to lose the fish you know so now there's an op opportunity yes and there we go this was a moment of relief I can tell you that what a moment I, I felt like I won the battle and the, and the game for me it's also like a game it's, it's more fair play than on a boat that's for sure um, getting the knife out. Yeah, I'm a big fan of catch and release. Um, if it's sport fishing in Germany or Europe in general, I almost always get the fish back to the water. This fish here would serve a whole local family. Yeah, and I'm really sorry. I, I, in that moment I stuck the knife in, I, I feel sorry for the fish. It's just not blah blah because we are here on YouTube. Um, I really felt sorry for him. Also grateful. Yeah, and a little cobia. I think it's a cobia. If you guys know a different name for that fish that accompanies the GT, please let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm not, yeah, fishing the warm salt waters of Brazil for a long time, so it might be even something else. It was a cobia. And of course, I don't bring many tools on my windsurf board, so I had to get the hooks out by hand. This usually is, yeah. Not so easy as you could imagine. Also, I'm not sure if the, if the fish is really dead. Usually I bang him on the head first and then give him the knife if I want to take them home. This time I needed to yeah, stuck the gaff inside and secure it there. So there was no banging on the head. So I'm not 100% confident, but in the end it worked out. Yeah, now realizing I made it. <laughs> I actually did bring my second GT. <laughs> onto the board. Yeah, and apologizing. Not sure if you could still hear it. Yeah, after you got the fish, um, you, you want to be quite quick. The water has 27 degrees, air has like 30. So we touch him on the front and then we ride him home, get him into the kitchen. Let's go. Today the GT is serving for the whole family. Let's go. She doesn't know there's fish yet. Yep, busted. By the way, you can tell she's not surprised. She did know there's some fish. Sorry guys. <laughs> so patient. Yeah, so here we are. I was super happy to donate that fish to some locals and um, yeah, we ate with seven people from that fish that night and I heard there was even some leftovers for breakfast or uh, lunch the next day. It's a super nice feeling. Fish is also getting pretty expensive here in Brazil and it's always nice and welcome to yeah to get people something right so it felt really good um, you can see I made a major mistake here I, I did cut the tail of the fish in order to slide it in the back we went with a cooler back from the beach you know to keep the fish fresh and uh, yeah the fish wouldn't fit in the cooler <laughs> So I cut the tail off. Bad idea would have been cut the head off. Yeah. Living and learning. So the locals, what they usually do, they cut the whole fish in pieces and then they would fry it. 
fry it like really rough in a pan. I would say fry it too much, but that's the way they do it here. Um, you're going to see later how this lady cuts up the fish. Um, I can tell you already up front they eat it mostly together with cassava flour. I'm not quite sure if it's a known thing in the outside world of Brazil. Here, yeah, especially in the northeastern part of Brazil, it's really typical to eat cassava flour. They put a bit of salt on it and then they fry that as well and it becomes crispy from the outside and a bit gummy in the inside. So it's basically three ingredients, if you will. It's the fish, it's the cassava flour and it's salt. And if you want to add the fourth ingredient, it's lemon. And I can tell you it is really, really, really tasty. I really did like it. And, uh, yeah, it looks a bit rough, <laughs> especially the way it's made, but uh, it was totally worth it and it was a great experience. On the next video, I will donate a fish to a local restaurant here that has a high class yeah, cooking reputation and uh, it's incredible what they did out of the fish. I can already tell you that by the time I edit this video and um, yeah, make this voice for you guys, I catched a few more fishes which I filmed, so I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel, give it a like, share it with some friends and um, yeah, let's grow this community like a family. Um, we're going to implement some lives over the coming weeks. I'm also going to implement other formats. So stick around, stay tuned and uh, be part of the family. Isn't that tasty? <laughs> really good. See you on the next one. Thanks for hanging around. Bye bye.